Find product links below and hundreds more videos on my channel. Hey guys, welcome back. So we're here with Ali from Pixel Buzz who is using the Movi M5 to shoot this video. We're doing a commercial shoot for the Nutty Bag. Hello, my name is Lisa Dahas and I'm here to show you how to make almond milk using the Nutty Bag. Hi. Let's take a look, first of all, at lighting. We've got two Pixel Pros, I actually have, I have a third one here, but uh, in this space we don't really need a third one. We have a backlight actually coming from the window, so that's actually giving us basically a second light uh, for the back. And then we have, we've got these tiny little lights, I'm leaving them just the tiniest bit on. And then I do have some additional little lights in here if I need them, which allow me to, in a very tight space, add some extra lighting. So for example, I've got this here with these, uh, I've got quite a few Joby products. This is from the Action Pack, that allows you to uh, mount to cars and windows and things like that, but it's also great as a, a little stand like this. And these will run off batteries if I need them to, but I also have uh, power adapters. These are the young, the, these are the Aperture uh, 160 LEDs. So those are the lights that I'm going to be using if I need a little bit more of a light on the actual uh, sort of preparation down here. So I might have one of these lights over there, sort of giving a bit more of a backlight. All right, let's take a closer look at the lighting. So we've actually got a few areas in the video where we can actually see this light in the actual commercial itself, but it really doesn't bother me. It didn't bother the client. And so far, I don't think anyone has actually mentioned that they saw this on YouTube, uh, like in the comments and stuff. So really, I don't care. I, hey, who's to say she doesn't have a uh, Yongno light in her kitchen? I keep saying Yongno, it's not Yongno, it's Aperture. This is the Aperture 160 LED. This is the version with the 95 plus CRI, the high color quality, uh, the newer version, lovely light. I love working with these. They're basically used as additional lights when I'm using my Pixapros as the main lights, as well as they're being used as my main lights when I need to travel light. And they are really fantastic, really tiny, really rugged, and I'm really happy with these. So over here, we've got the uh, Joby Action Gorillapod. This is actually the same as the hybrid version of the Gorillapod, except that it's uh, intended for use with GoPros and, and other similar cameras. It comes with some accessories that are more suitable for that. And it has uh, slightly different colors, like, you know, it's got some red and stuff. So first of all, you'll notice that the kitchen looks really nice and that's not by accident. We just didn't just get to a kitchen that looks perfect. This is actually uh, borrowed. So it's not a kitchen that we like, that are like a professional filming kitchen or anything like that. I basically went around and I removed everything that was a distraction and put a few things that I felt added. So like, uh, you know, added something to the shop. So for example here, I thought this looked really nice and I sort of went back and forth, moved them to the exact position that I thought was uh, looking the best. I got rid of almost everything else around here. I moved most of the cups away and just kept a few. Uh, I made sure the knives were, you know, nice and tidy on this uh, magnetic rack over here. And uh, yeah, basically made sure there was nothing in the sink, etc. So down here on the floor, we've got another aperture light that's on a gorilla pod, and it's just sitting on the floor and it's pointing upwards. And that's giving me this sort of streak of lights on the fridge because the fridge was actually much darker than this. It was actually sort of this color on the entire fridge. And I thought it was just sort of uh, dull. So I added that light. It really improved the shot quite a bit. So over here, I've just got the Pixar Pro 100D in this corner door behind the door and it's just giving some light into that room so that it's uh, not just dark windows over here and then of course we've got the two pixel pros in the main room over here so we've got one over here behind the counter where i am next to me and then we've got one over here uh, next to the door and then as you can see over here we've got these uh, tiny little highlights these warm highlights on her hair and that's actually from the ceiling lights being uh, turned on and then of course we're getting a tiny little bit of light from the window here, which is just giving us a very, very soft, very mild backlight. We have a petrol bag, probably one of the best quality bags I've seen, and it comes with a little LED inside, which is so cool. I might add some more separators into it because it's actually intended for a big camera system. For example, being used with a rig, ready to go or almost ready to go, you might want to like remove the back part or something like disconnect it into two parts. But what I'm using this for, for this shoot, is I've got it set up with quite a lot of things in there. Super, super impressed. I will review this in a separate video. Let's take a look inside, and I'm gonna keep this pretty quick. The Sackler Ace Rig, I'm not gonna go over that in this video. Have a look for the link down below. I will have a little separate video about that. We've got the Manfrotto arm, Aperture Lights, even though I know I won't need three for this video, but for these kind of things, for commercial work, I like to have a little more than I need, rather than I uh, need something and not have it. These things have the Gorillapod quick release plates connected. That's uh, really, really nice and quick to work with. I don't like to get to a shoot and start screwing things into each other. You'll see it in the, in the video about the slider as well. 
couple of little stands for audio. I do have a few little things in here. Uh, I've got some lighting stuff, black wrap, which is basically just like a foil that you can use to shape light if you want. We've got a little bag of uh, little parts and tools, which I mostly don't need. We've got a couple of little Gorilla Pods. These are fantastic. They're both basically the same, but we have the action version and we have the hybrid. Very quick to uh, set up with the lighting. So if I want to have a light, that's it, ready to go. I believe this one has batteries already, so yeah, ready to go uh, right out of the bag. A Samsonite case, it rolls with four wheels. It's fantastic for carrying big things. Rather than foam, which I personally don't like, I don't like the fact that foam is just a bit too limiting for me because the foam does take up a lot of space and you know, cutting it to shape, just not my thing. So I've actually got duvet in there. So I've literally bought a duvet from eBay. It's 15 pounds, protective without eating up a lot of space. And so it doesn't look super fancy, but it does a great job of protecting my gear. And so, so that's mostly my, my big stuff lighting case. And then over here we've got the camera bag. It's only A7S of course. Uh, I don't need to mention this, most of you have heard of this camera. A couple of lighting adapters for the Aperture 160s. And I know some of you will ask why the 160s and not the 198. Because they're basically the same, the difference is the accessories that come with it. I won't be using many different lenses here, I'll be using my 35 for a few shots here. We're going to be doing some photography as well here. So. Uh, you know, so for the photography, I'd rather have a separate camera. I'd, anyways, I'd rather have a backup camera. Uh, of course, that is important to have. I won't shoot anything without a backup camera. And then I've got the Samyang 35 5D Mark III. Cards, batteries, some uh, cleaning stuff, some protective stuff. I have a rain cover with me in case we need to film outside. We've got a few extra lenses which I won't use. Mainly today I'll be using the Sony 55mm FE. Quite a few blogs have said is the sharpest autofocus lens ever. It's expensive, but not that expensive for the quality that you get here. And the reason I'm going with autofocus here, I don't always use autofocus, but sometimes, I know a lot of you are gonna say, oh, you can't use autofocus for video. Yes, you can when it's this good. With some other cameras, I wouldn't. If I wanna shallow depth the field, if I wanna uh, blur out the background a little bit, then I know that the camera can follow the subject if, even if uh, she moves back and forwards a little bit, the camera is going to actually focus for me and I can actually worry about other things and if I see that it's not working for me, then I can change it. That for now, legs, they are fantastic. I've spoken about these in the previous video. I'll have links down below. I won't go into these in much detail today, but they are fantastic legs, super strong, super tall, super low down to the ground when you need them, really quick to work with, crazy sturdy for legs that actually aren't that heavy. Eye footage, slider. In my opinion, this is the best slider on the market right now. Now, what I've done here is I've literally just taken a slider out of the bag. It's got a Giotto's quick release plate under here, which allows me to connect everything crazy quick. Another Giotto's quick release plate system right here. So everything just snaps together. This is the rotating flywheel weight system. And if you've seen my video a few years ago, you'd know that this uh, was basically my idea. This slider is crazy lightweight, considering that it's a short slider that can become a long slider really, really quickly. What you can also do is you can use these two uh, extra poles to have an automatic pan tilt system, which will pan and tilt as you move, so that when I don't need the extra length, I can actually use this as a pan tilt system. So, and then this will need a few extra little pieces. This gives me a really, really, really smooth motion and allows me to concentrate on actually aiming the camera where I want it to go. This is the Veron 815 FH. I'll have links down below to all the things I have discussed in the video. Hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Hello, my name is Lisa DeHaas and I'm here to show you how to make almond milk using a nutty bag. I have here 100 grams of almonds which have been soaking overnight for 12 hours and which have been rinsed very, very thoroughly. Put them in the blender and then fill it with water up to the one litre mark. I like to sweeten my almond milk with a date, which of course has been pitted, and just put it in the blender. I also like to flavour it with cinnamon. Then put the lid on the blender. The blending is finished when you see the frost appearing in the blender on the milk. Open it up. 
and very simply pour it into the nappy bag. Okay, so now all you need to do is squeeze the milk out of the bag. You just squeeze until all the milk is out. Now what you're left with is the almond bits and I like to use them in my morning smoothies. So I normally put them in a container and put them in the fridge. And here's your milk. You can now keep it refrigerated in another container such as this and keep it for three days. Have a go at making an omelette milk yourself and enjoy.